hello on Saturday the 6th of November. I hope that everyone had a good time last night and you all kept safe. And of course, there are still many people who will be holding their bonfire celebrations tonight. Our opening prayer. Loving Lord, we are aware of our human shortcomings. We ask that by your Holy Spirit you give us strength to work for that which is good through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's readings are from Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2, to chapter 5 and verse 7, and Psalm 18, verses 31 to 50. I know that at present, that because of the infection transmission risk, that many churches aren't sharing the wine as part of their communion service. However, when we do use wine, I have to say that there can be a considerable variation in its quality. Now, I'm not suggesting that Holy Communion has now become a form of wine tasting. Far from it. But on occasions, it has been said to me when conducting services as a visiting minister that the church where I'm leading worship has a good quality of wine. But as far as true vintage is concerned, I really don't have much idea. However, it seems that the vineyard owners in biblical times were rather more clued up than I am. That's why we find regular mentions of wine and vines in the Bible, because it was something with which they could identify. Our Isaiah reading covers more than one image linked to vines. It starts with a branch, described as the branch of the Lord. And it points us towards the future hope of salvation for those who have stayed faithful to God. However, the main imagery centres on a vineyard which represents Israel. When you take great care of your plants, you expect plentiful fruit or strong, healthy blooms. And it's so disappointing if all the effort doesn't result in this. God has brought Israel into being. He's loved them and he's cared for them. They're special to him. But rather than being obedient and responding to God, by doing the right thing, the people are instead disloyal. They do their own thing and they are bringing about distress. Yesterday we touched on all good gifts coming from God and how we use these gifts. As Christians, we have received and accepted the gift of Jesus' love and saving power. Yet, how do we use this gift? Our words and actions should be guided by it, and we should share it with others. I'm now going to pray for our leaders. Gracious Lord, we continue to pray for everyone in a position of leadership of any kind. The complexity of the situations they are faced with doesn't get any easier. We ask that you pour down your wisdom on each of the leaders and pray that as they receive it, they follow the guidance which you give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for today's prayer points. Let's pray that the vacancies in the care sector are filled. Let's ask God for ongoing wisdom in our lives. And let's pray about the ongoing high transmission rate of COVID-19 cases in Britain. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Reverends Jason and Barbara and myself hope that you all have a good weekend and do please carry on taking care. The service pattern continues as in previous weeks. But here at St Aidan's there is a 9.30 and 11 o'clock service and these two services are the same in format. And at St Luke's, whose worship is presently being held within St Wilfrid's Academy, there is an 11 o'clock service. And our blessing. To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour, glory and power, for ever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you today and ever.